So guys, um, well, welcome back to the channel and the match preview of Cardiff City against our team Wolverhampton Wanderers. And um, this game takes on um, a big importance in so many ways actually. And this is going to be the match preview, stats, facts, predictions, team news, my thoughts. Hopefully you'll leave your thoughts as well. And it's all coming up next. So, moving into this game, uh, Neil Warnock, Nuno Espirito Santo, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Cardiff City, a Friday night down in Cardiff with a lot at stake. We all know about that. Yes, we do, because we had that dramatic game last season in the Championship when both teams were neck and neck. Well, I wouldn't say neck and neck. Wolves were a bit in front, but at Cardiff, if it had won that game, it would have made it very, very interesting in the run-up. And obviously, the two penalties in added time, Neves' free kick, the drama at the end, the exuberation, the exultation of Nuno running onto the pitch, Neil Warnock getting really, really upset because he didn't shake his hands and all that drama. Well, we're moving on into the Premier League. Cardiff ended up going up. Wolves went up as champions. Neil Warnock, it's his birthday on Saturday, he's 70. So happy birthday, Neil Warnock, from all us Wolves fans. But hopefully you're not going to have a great present on Friday night, fingers crossed, because obviously as a Wolves fan, we want to see Wolves win the game. Um, but we do wish you all the best. And regardless of anything, <laughs> you know, you're uh, you're definitely a character. So um, moving on into the game, Neil Warnock has suggested that he's going to make changes for the game. They've got three games in eight days. Wolves, will they make changes as well? You suggest potentially we will do. Obviously, we've got the Chelsea match on the, uh, the Wednesday and then we've also got the Newcastle game, which is on the Sunday. So moving on to some head-to-head -head facts in terms of the uh, the game. Wolves have actually won two of their last three games versus Cardiff, including the 1-0 victory in the Championship that I referred to in April. Both league encounters last season are actually won by the away side. And Wolves have won six of the last ten fixtures, but Cardiff have won four. Um, this is also the first top flight meeting between Wolverhampton Wanderers and Cardiff City since, would you believe, February 1962. And that was a 3-2 away triumph for Wolves. And yes, we would love that result tomorrow night. Maybe that would happen. You never know. It'd be great. 3-2, dramatic game, winning the game. We'd take that, wouldn't we? Cardiff's actual record loss in a top flight is against Wolves. And that was 9-1 in September 1955. That's Bluebird's heaviest home defeat. It's also Wolves' biggest away victory. Can't see it being a 9-1, but it's nice to have that little bit of a record. Moving on to some stats and some facts in regards to um, Cardiff. Cardiff have won two and lost three of their last five league games. Seven of the Bluebirds' eight points have actually come at home in the Premier League this, say, this season, just taking the one point on the road. Victory would actually see them record successive top-flight victories in a single season since, would you believe, the last time Wolves met and then met in the top flight was the 1961-62 season. The Bluebirds, they've not kept a clean sheet in their last 11 fixtures. Their last clean sheet shutout came against Huddersfield. Cardiff have failed to score in seven of their 13 Premier League fixtures this season, which is the joint highest record uh, along with Crystal Palace. And also, Cardiff have only scored first in one of those uh, 13 Premier League games, and that was against Chelsea, which they ended up losing 4-1. Wolves stats. Um, so, Wolves, as you know, we're um, actually winless in five games. All four of our league wins this season have actually come against teams that are below us in the table. Obviously Huddersfield were below us on the table at the weekend and uh, we did put in that awful performance but you know Huddersfield did play well but we were not on it at all. Again another record this season is that we've only scored um, in the first half of our 13 games twice 
in the Premier League, which is actually the lowest in the whole division. Wolves have also just used 17 players all season in the league, which is the uh, fewest in the uh, out of all 20 clubs. And Matt Doherty, if he does play, would be his 200th league appearance for the Wanderers. And I think he probably will play. So Matt, congratulations on reaching that milestone and let's hope you have a fantastic game and score a hat-trick. And just one other interesting stat to leave you on before we get on to take my team thoughts and predictions is that Wolves have played actually four times on a Friday night under Nuno and we have won four times. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that will be a positive omen. Moving on to what I think uh, my team will be, the, the Wolves team will be for the game against Cardiff and also predictions. And obviously I want to leave you to leave your predictions on the, uh, the match. As always, if you get the score right and the first goal scorer right, you have a chance of being mentioned in my reaction vlog or match day experience vlog. So leave your thoughts in the comments below. And you can also pop over to my Instagram and enter the competition and that as well. And I'll put that up for you as well. But in terms of team, interesting one, isn't it? Because everyone, apart from probably Cody and Jimenez, had a really bad game the weekend. Even Neves was a million miles away from anywhere near his best. I can't see much of it. I, there is an argument for a change for Bennett uh, for Dendonka, but in a game like this, I think you, you're going to really, it's going to be a lot to throw Dendonka into this. It is going to be a very tough, physical, Alamo type of game with the way that, you know, Cardiff will close us down. There'll be balls into the box. They are direct, they're physical. And I think uh, Bennett will probably be the most suited to stand up to that. So I wouldn't drop Bennett. In the middle, is the game really cut out for Martinez? We know he's a fantastic player, um, but he did get bullied out of the game a lot, which is why Nuno took him off basically at half-time um, against Huddersfield. He got taken off as well against um, Tottenham. And he brought on Morgan Skids White. But again, I'm not really sure whether this is a starting type of game for Morgan. I'd be, it, it would not surprise me to see Saiz starting alongside Neves. Um... I think I've mentioned before, we kind of do need a destroyer in the middle. Um, and Dar obviously was the perfect person for that. And that might be something that we're looking to get in the January window. But Saiz is a strong player. He's, you know, he's probably looking for an opportunity. He might be the right person for the right game for this. Especially when we've got Chelsea uh, coming up in midfield where you'd think you'd put Martinho back in for. Um, Jimenez... Up front, I think he does a great job. He will hold the ball up. He will chase down everything, and he, you know, he, you know, I do like him and S. Then on the the wing, <sighs> do you persist with Costa? Do you give Cavalera another chance? I'm not really sure. Do you bring a Dharma in to start Jota? I think we'll see Jota starting, and potentially um, Costa. I, th I think Cavalera might be back on the bench for this one. I can't see Adama Traore start. I think he might come on late on again. So I think potentially it'll be Jota and Costa. But what do you think? What would you changes would you make? Who would you bring in onto the bench? There's been calls in some ways for Dominic Iorfa to come into the uh, the side as a wing back. You know, I don't know what you think about that. But I did think Vanegra did did reasonably well. He's quite good going forward. Is he in a game like this going to be cut out for the real? knit and gritty and fight and fury of what this game's going to be. I'm not sure. We'll see. In terms of score prediction, um, my head and my heart got it completely wrong against Huddersfield. You know, if we can't afford really to lose the game against Cardiff. We don't want to lose more ground on those beyond because we will get dragged into a battle that we don't want. I think if we come out of it with a nil-nil or a 1-1 one -one or a 2-2 two -two or whatever, as we come out with it with a point... That would not be a bad result. Yeah, we do want to get back to winning ways, but not losing, I think, is a must. Um, so, my head says a point, um, and I'm going to go for a 1-1 with an, a Neves goal, because I think he's due one. 
Um, I think he'll probably be practicing his free kicks after the last few weeks. But Neves is one game away from a suspension as well. So if he does pick up a yellow card, I think he might miss the uh, the Chelsea game. Um, but my heart says that it's going to be a Wolves win. And why not? Why shouldn't it be February 1962 and Wolves win 3-2? Just putting it out there. And uh, so that's my thoughts. Leave your thoughts on team selection, on the score prediction, and who's going to score first. Any changes you would make? How are you feeling? Are you worried about the game? Are you excited? Are you going? If you're not going to be going, I'm sure you're going to be watching it on the TV somewhere in the world. Where are you going to be watching it from and who with? Leave that all below. And um, the other thing is, I've um, got my new phone. I bought the iPhone XS, and if you can tell me um what <laughs> if you can tell me what tv show this comes from i'll be very impressed i've just something i've started watching so i just downloaded that wallpaper and that's a little abstract question for you if you can tell me what tv show that character is from so yeah so if you're new around here please hit the subscribe if you're regular hit the bell button because you will be first to be notified of my reaction vlog after the Cardiff game and also the match day experience vlog and even if you're not going to comment please smash us a like that would be wonderful and hopefully fingers crossed we can get a result even better a win and Nuno can shake Warnock's hand whatever the result at the end and have his glass of wine birthday and wish him a happy birthday and go cheers but we'll still beat you again Let's hope. Whew. Come on.